Hi everybody, Natasha Butler, JC Marketing Lecturer, and this is week six, video two, where we are talking about segmentation, target markets, and positioning for our Marketing Matters subject, BU1108, BU2108. So this week, we're discussing segmentation, target markets, and positioning. And in the previous video, we discussed why a business segments the market. So now in this video, we're going to look at the variables businesses use or marketers use to segment that market so that they can help identify their ideal target audience. So segmentation variables are characteristics of individuals, groups or organizations used to divide a market into segments. The above table or, or the, the table here has been taken from chapter six of the textbook and it outlines those four variables markets, marketers use to segment the market. So marketers will consider the demographics, the geographic variables, psychographic and the behavioristic variables of the seg to segment our audience. Now, as a result of market segmentation, stereotypes have been formed such as girls play with dolls and boys play with trucks. So whilst um, the use of stereotypes are really important for us for market segmentation, it's also really important for us to be aware of the diverse nature of people. Segmentation isn't about exclusion. It's about identifying and describing the characteristics of the person or the people that are most likely to purchase our product so that our marketing mix can be tailored to connect with the best suited audience for our product. Now, this isn't saying that all girls play with dolls or boys never play with dolls. It's saying that based on the data and the research that we've done, we know that girls are more likely to play with dolls than boys because of X, Y, and Z reasons. And as such, targeting girls to buy dolls is more likely for us to maximize our profits. So let's have a look at those four variables in more detail now. So, First of all, let's look at that demographic segmentation. So marketers use demographic characteristics because they're often closely linked to consumer needs and purchasing behavior, and they can be really readily measured as well. So these include such things, such, these include things such as age. Age is a really common variable that marketers use to segment the mark for segmentation purposes. So as we know, uh, as consumers and through our life and our personal experience, our needs and wants have changed significantly from being an infant through to whatever stage of life you're in now. And those needs and wants and desires are can, going to continue to change from um, through the different seasons of your life until basically it reaches its end. So one of the ways that we can segment our market is looking at that age demographic. Marketers also consider gender as well because different genders have different needs, wants, desires and likes. So we'll quite often use gender to further segment the market. We'll consider race and ethnicity as well. Especially this is somewhere that we quite commonly might use um, race and ethnicity is around for food, music, clothing, cosmetics and services such as banking and insurance. We might also consider income or people's income because it, this affects a consumer's ability to buy different products and their desires for certain products. For example, a person with an income of under $60,000 a year is probably unlikely to buy a luxury car such as a Porsche. So knowing this, marketers definitely wouldn't target somebody in that age uh, in that income bracket of $60,000. They're definitely going to be looking at somebody with an earning capacity that can afford such a luxury item. We, marketers also consider the family life cycle. So that considers things such as marital status, the presence and age of any children, because this all affects consumers' needs for housing, different appliances, and different products altogether. So if we go back and look at our previous example where we're looking for a Porsche, and let's say for an example, a Porsche 911 GT3, a really zippy, nice sports car. Well, due to the design of that car, it's really not going to be suitable for a family with three kids. So as such, Porsche would be targeting a customer that doesn't have any young children for this type of car, but they would be targeting that type of consumer with their SUV model. So we take into consideration 
what stage of life um, are people at or their family life cycle when, in our marketing segmentation? We also may consider such things as people's education level or possibly even their occupation as well, because of course we know that people with different occupations are more interested in different things. The Australian Bureau of Statistics or the ABS is Australia's national statistical agency and it provides us with trusted official statistics on a wide range of economic, social, population and environmental matters of importance to Australia. And they do this through the collection of their census data, which is collected every four years. Now, this is a highly valuable source of truth for marketers and decision makers. And I know myself in my personal experience, I draw on this information quite often when I'm developing my marketing plans. So we've had a look at the demographic variables that we use to segment our consumer markets. Now let's have a look at some of the geographic variables. So the geographic segmentation or the ge geographic variables takes into consideration the natural boundaries and makeup of different geographical areas. So that could include countries. It could include our state boundaries. We could go deeper into cities or even into suburbs. When we're looking at geographic segmentation, we might be considering, is our customer living in the city? Are they living out in the suburbs? Do they live in a regional area or a rural area or somewhere that's regionally remote? We would also consider things such as the climate, the terrain of the area, the city size, population density, and maybe as we just spoke about those urban rural areas. We also may consider um, the market density, the geo demographic segmentation or else micro marketing as well when we're looking at that geographic segmentation. So market density refers to the number of potential customers within a unit of land area, such as how many customers do we have in one square kilometre, which is very different if you consider for somewhere in a city or in the um, metropolitan suburbs compared to out in regional remote Australia. We may consider that geo demographic segmentation and that's where we look at clusters of people in postcode areas or even smaller neighbourhood units based on lifestyle and demographic information. And micro marketing is an approach to market segmentation in which businesses focus precise marketing efforts on very small geographic markets, such as the such as that community or maybe even neighborhood markets. So now we've looked at that demographic variable. We've looked at the geographic variable. Let's now have a look at the psychographic variables. So when we're looking at segmenting our audience using psychographic variables, we are looking at things such as personality, motives and lifestyles. So psychographic variables can be used independently to segment a market and they're more commonly combined with other types of segmentation variables. Personality characteristics can be really useful for segmenting markets when a product resembles many competing products which quite often they do. And consumers' needs are not significantly related to any other segmentation variables. So this approach can be a little bit risky though, because it can be difficult to measure personality traits accurately. And we should choose personality characteristics that are viewed positively for our brand. So when using motives to segment a market, marketers divide the market based on consumers' reasons for making a purchase. Lifestyle segmentation groups individuals on the basis of their beliefs, their values, and how they spend their time. And they do this along with other demographic variables such as education, income, etc. So for example, segmenting our market using the psychographic variable, may we may consider people who participate in triathlons and look at how we target them together, taking into consideration some of our other um, variables that we can use. It may be we're segmenting, looking at people who have an interest in gardening or beliefs or attitudes towards global warming or other areas. 
segmenting our audience using psychographic variables can be a really, really valuable way to segment the market because it helps us get a better picture and a better understanding of who the ideal target customer can be or is. So we've looked at that demographic, we've looked at that geographic variables, and we've looked at the psychographic variables. Let's have a look now at that last one, which is the behavior behavioralistic variables. So the behavioral behavioralistic variables um, commonly look at the consumer's use of the product, such as are they regular users or are they casual users? You know, so or such as how does a person use a car? Is it for family transportation or is it for weekend getaways or is it for status? So what's our perp uh, what's our purpose? What's how are we going to interact and behave with our purchase? How consumers use or apply the products may also determine that segmentation as well. Benefit segmentation is the division of a market according to benefits that consumers want from the product. If you if using benefit segmentation, the segmentation must be identifiable, recognizable and accessible to the marketing efforts. So when we're looking at our variables for segmenting those consumer markets, we may not use all of the different variables in each category, but we will consider the demographics, the geographic, psychographic and the behavioral. It's just we may not need to consider age, for example, or education it may not be something that is important to us when we are um, identifying who our target audience is and when we're segmenting. So it's about identifying which variables we use in each category, but we would always consider all four variables, the demographic, geographic, psychographic and behavioural when we are segmenting our market. And when we're looking at the business markets, well, we also need to segment them because we're wanting to identify again who our target audience is in the business sector. So these can be, um, we can segment them usually by using multiple variables or in some sort of combination. So again, it might be looking at geographic location because demand for some products may vary because of differences in climate, terrain, customer preferences or similar factors. So for example, if I was a wholesaler of air conditioners or refrigerators, for example, I'm probably more likely to get more sales out of retail stores that are based in Townsville or Northern Queensland compared to um, based in Tasmania because of that geographic difference. Marketers might, um, B2B marketers might also segment business markets by the type of organisations um, because of the required product features or the distribution systems, the price structures and the selling set strategies that may be different with different organisations. Or they might look at the size of the customer or the organisational size because that may influence a customer's purchasing procedures and the types and quantities of products desired. Or else finally, marketers may segment business markets on how the organisational customers actually use the products. So, Marketing Matters team, there we have it. We have now examined the four variables marketers use to segment the market. In the next video, we are then going to discuss how we go through the process to identify the most optimal segment for us to target to ensure that we hit our revenue goals. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.